Good morning. Learning that matters. Who cares? So what? Why is it important? How is it going to change the world? Those are some of the questions that our year four students asked of themselves as they prepared topics and videos for TED-Ed. They're questions that we're asking ourselves at Chinese International School as we look to the future of learning, as we look to our future. What learning matters? And we keep coming back to, so? What learning does matter? Does content matter? Does it matter about history and social studies? Well, I suppose that depends. With so much that is now Googleable, what learning is it that's going to position our students in the world that is rapidly changing? And really, for a future that is unknown. David Perkins, who's a Harvard professor um, affiliated with Project Zero and author of lots and lots of books, he asked that same question, what learning matters for a changing, complex world today and for the future, for our unknown future? He asked that question after his plenary um, at the International Conference on Thinking. So the respondees kind of came up with some things and uh, he organized them. What do you think? Think for a moment, what learning do you think matters? This is the list that they came up with. And this isn't in any particular order at this point. Take a look. Is it similar to what you were thinking? Different, maybe some things missing, some things you wouldn't have thought of? Then uh, David Perkins kind of grouped them into themes and, and rank ordered them. And these are the responses. With the largest words being the largest number of responses. Now, as you look at that list, there's some, there's some things that stand out for me. First of all, that thinking is pretty much the largest word doesn't surprise me, as it was a conference on thinking. What does surprise me is that I don't see a lot of traditional subjects. I don't see the sort of content subjects of social studies, economics, etc. And the ones that had been mentioned are now so small in the word cloud that you really don't even see them. Things like, surprisingly, science, mathematics, and yeah, even technology. What surprises me is that the, the words that are up at the top, or the larger words, are things like self-understanding and empathy, ethics. And why this really surprises me is that normally when we think of education and we think, you know, what is it that matters now and in the future, we usually have those cognitive thinking subjects, academic skills up at the top, and items like um, self-understanding or empathy, the uh, social-emotional, the affective, sometimes even called non-cognitive, typically fluffy, right? And they're, and they're placed at the bottom. Well, interestingly, recent neuroscience uh, research actually says that, you know what? You really don't have one without the other. Cognition and emotion are inextricably intertwined. And in fact, emotion is sort of the rudder of learning. So in some ways, with recent research, it doesn't surprise me. But as we look to the future, and as we look to what learning does matter for our students now, and for them to think about the future, we keep coming back at our school to dispositions matter. Those words like perseverance, creativity, love. Those are the skills that are going to see us into the future. 
Those are the skills that students can develop, that we can develop, so that our students thrive and flourish in a changing world. Thank you.